Okay, so here's the statement. I have a Prius 19, um, sorry, uh, 2011, and we want to see what we can do about installing the um, traction battery leads for a um, uh, for a two kilowatt um, inverter. Um, into the system. Now this means that I have to attach the leads to the traction battery. So here's the back of the car getting ready to start taking off parts of the system. Okay, the mats are out and the seats are back so now we need to move to the next step. Now the back is up and the cable is out that I have to install and now I have to remove the bottom pan. Okay, now the bottom tray is out. The 12 volt battery is somewhat exposed and now to remove more of the trim. Okay, I just removed the trim on the bottom side the stuff over the around the battery and now I'm getting ready to remove the bolts uh, that hold the tie down straps so that I can start removing and also I need to remove the nuts on the front and back so that I can get to the trim. Okay, now I'm going to have to take out some of the nuts. I found one nut right here to take off this panel. Have to see how that works out. Hmm. So here I actually have to get in and remove these proper components. I've got out two, one from there and one from there. Now I have to get the next one out. I'm going to slide the breaker underneath to it and lift it out. Okay, there we are. I was able to slide the breaker on and pop out those three. Actually, there's four all together there. Now I've got some I have to remove on the other side. And now here are the other two on this side that I just removed. Popped them out, took them out. Okay, now I have lifted up this bottom panel. I had to pop out one by just simply lifting hard this one and that one. And this, I guess, which is sort of an alignment thing after I had removed that screw right there, was adequate to be able to pull it up off the top. Okay, now I got the back uh, cover off and I'm looking at the air vent duct which I'm going to have to get the, um, the um, pry bar underneath and so pop up that pop rivet there. And then I might be ready to, to take off the battery and stuff but I haven't decided, decided to do that yet. So away we go. Okay, I've taken the cover off of that. This required moving, removing a one of the pop um, trim containers there. There's one down at the far side that I'm having some trouble with, but I'm going to have to remove that. And then the next step is going to be removing the ground battery terminal, which will be right there. Okay, now I removed the ground battery terminal and I took a piece of electrician's tape and I taped the end up just to make sure that it doesn't have any, any potential for, for touching uh, the terminal and, and, and creating a, a pathwork for where the battery could connect to, uh, to the system. And now the next step is to remove the, the big power lock. So we, we um, turn this thing out and pull it out and it is now out of the car and supposedly it is now disconnected. Now the instructions say you've got to wait 10 minutes just to make sure that everything is off on the system. However, instead of waiting the full 10 minutes for that, I'm actually going to start to undo some of the, uh, some of the nuts that are screwed on around the cover plate which should cover the, uh, the transfer switch and, and all of those things and then I've got to get out my uh, my voltmeter to make sure that everything is, is off and, uh, and it's safe. 
just for safety, I remembered um, part of the instruction booklet says to make sure that you take the the um, connector that you pull out of that part of it and stick it in your pocket so that nobody has a chance to put it in while you're still working on it. Okay, I've got the uh, the cover off. Um, I shouldn't say off. I've got the nuts out, and there is one nut here, one there, and one down the side. Now there is a yellow, I mean a, an orange tab here that it looks as if I have to remove before I can take the thing off, so I'm getting ready to to investigate that tab. Now the removal of this orange pin um, has a, a nut and a little tab on the side and I actually had to fabricate a tool that would be able to twist that. Not too sure how required it is, but it, it was locked in place and I was able to twist it off to the side by making a tool. Um, that This is a, a shot of the tool and you can see it's just a piece of it, it's just a nail that was bended in 90 degrees and the edges were kind of flattened because uh, having a nail with rounded edges made it difficult so I ground the edges a little bit to be able to twist it so that I would be able to get enough power into it to be able to twist that nut. When I popped it off it fell down on the inside so I had some difficulty. Now I'm operating from this point forward using gloves because the instruction manual says that you do need to use gloves. Now the next step is to check the voltage across the battery terminals and when I do check them that's that's about across there and the thing says I've got zero volts so that's a very good start. Okay now I have removed the two nuts on there and they were 10 millimeter nuts. So I've removed the 10 millimeter nuts and I'm going to get ready to install the cable. Now I have placed the two connectors on, I've not tightened it down, and I have fished the, the power wire underneath the blower and out the back so that it can be in the, in the back tray. So it actually, as you can see, I've got it shoved underneath the, the blower cable here and it's down there in the corner and it comes all the way around and I've got it attached to here. Now the white cable is the one that is connected to the load and uh, so that should be the positive side and the uh, black side should be the negative. And so that's how it's attached and if you notice I've got a cap over the end which I, which I uh, purchased to be able to put on there. Okay, now I have screwed down the two terminals, but at this point I need to torque them in and the specification from the manual says that they need to be torqued at 92 um, centimeters, uh, hmm, uh, 92 uh, kilograms per centimeter. Well, I had some difficulty um, with the positioning of the cable, of the, the uh, cable for the, um, you know, for, for, for putting in the inverter. So I've fed it from underneath. I slit back the, the, the cable um, pieces substantially, um, uh, probably about three inches, I guess so that I could feed it on the underside and have the cable come out the bottom. So now the cable comes out the bottom, it comes over the top and you can see the way I've got it attached to the to the two terminals. And also I've taken the the plate, this one right here is the plate that goes over the whole thing, and I've bent up this corner right here. I bent this corner up so that it doesn't imp impinge upon the cable and hope and cut it so you can see that now we'll have a rounded exposure expo to, to uh, touch the cable and uh, and therefore protect it from movement uh, when it's reattached now the terminals have been torqued down to their um, 
90 kilogram centimeters and if you look carefully you can see the cable as it comes underneath and that bent up edge of the of the cover is, is no, not impinging on the cable at all as it goes underneath the blower. All four of the bolts are now attached and the orange plug is now reinstalled and now we'll start on the other parts. The blower cover rivets are put in their positions and now we will insert them into their, their holes and their spots so that we can then just drive them in. Now we're getting ready to install the blower um, I mean the air air vent for the where the the um, battery. So now that is positioned, and I'll have to put the rivets in. Now the rivet is installed over there, and we have to get ready to put the back cover on. Okay, now we're getting ready to put this black screw. In the back. Oops, that's obviously not it. I've got a bolt that I have to put in there. Okay, the back cover is on. Now I have to put the uh, the trim piece over the back with all of its uh, rivet connections. Okay, now the back panels are attached, and now I'm going to re-put in the the um, fuse system. So I have to put it in like that and snap it into place. So that's now installed. So that's now installed. And now I've got to go reattach the the, um, the battery. So I will then go over and reattach the negative, the ground strap for the battery. Now the battery is re-strapped re and obviously I took off a few trim pieces that I didn't need to remove so I'll just have to put them back on. I've repositioned the cover for the battery and this back, this back plate is in position now and I'm, um, I've put the, high, the uh, connection for the inverter I've laid it into the same compartment where the battery goes. So you can see it right there through the side. I've now installed the, um, the, the two tie-down connections to the back. And I'm getting ready to, to put the piece, the um, trim piece that goes across the back latch. I've repositioned the Velcro pre piece across the, uh, the back trough and then the cover goes over that. Okay now I've got the, the back panels on and I'm going to then put in the back tray. Now the back tray is in. I'll put on the back cover. Okay the back cover is in and uh, now I'll put in the rest of the stuff and see whether I can start it up. One thing that's apparently very important is when you're installing this plug to slide it back when you're done. For instance, this disconnects it, this rotates the plug out. But when you stick the plug back in, you have to plug it in, you have to rotate it like this, and then you have to slide this over. If that's not slid over, then the traction battery is not connected.